to call the executive committee meeting for June 13th to order at 11:34 a.m. and Micah if you could lead us in the pledge of allegiance I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all Thank you, Micah. Uh, could we have roll call, please? Oh, yes. Sorry. About Parker. That. Here. Balich. Berkowitz. Dean Schlotman. Freeman. Mueller. Here. Petzl. Here. Richmond. Trenier. Van Dyne? Williams? Here. Ogala? Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. We don't have any minutes today. Moving on to old business. Number one is uh, ordinance repealing sections 121-02.02, sorry, 121.03 and 121.04 of chapter 125 of the Will County Code of Ordinances. Chapter one. Oh, 121. I'm sorry. I don't know why I said 125. Apparently, I like that number. Sorry, Chapter 121 of the Will County Code of Orson. Can I get a motion? Motion Second. Freeman, second Mueller. And Mary, come on up. She's been waiting all morning for us to show up. One hour and 34 minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so this was the um, issue that Member Logan, I believe, brought forward, uh, requested upon review, um, and I, I guess the question that we have for the county board and the committee is whether or not they want to move forward with the $250 fee, which is, I know, is the third one down, but these are all related, so we need to talk about it as, um, you know, one topic to know which direction that we are going in. So. The fee is a $200 fee and pursuant to the statute, two parties are responsible for, for paying that fee, the, the owner of the premises and the owner of the machine. Um, and what I did was talk to leadership about the difficulty of administering a $200 and $50 fee for the machines. Um, so we would have to send out bills, we would have to collect, um, this is not attached to a license, so if they choose not to pay, it is not a situation where you would be pulling the license. So you would have to take it to administrative adjudication and, or you would have to take it to the courts to actually collect the fee. And so my question to them was, do you still want to move forward with the fee? And the reason I'm bringing this up over the, you know, in the repealing the sections of 121.02, 121.03 and 121.04 is because if you choose not to do a fee, 
then we would just repeal the entirety of chapter 121. We wouldn't simply repeal the sections. So that's why this is interrelated and that's why I'm bringing up that issue now. Okay, discussion. Um, I could probably saw the question on my face. Mm -hmm. I so did. is it normal for counties to get a fee? So the statute allows counties to impose a $250 fee. We did check um, the surrounding counties. Most of the collar counties do not charge the fee. There are two counties, and I apologize, I don't recall which ones they were. They were smaller counties that do impose the fee, but we were concerned about the structure that they used to do that. Um, so we would have to come, you know, part of it was who in the county is going to be responsible for keeping track of um, these sites, who owns the terminals, making sure the bills are sent out, making sure collection is done. Um, I don't know if we have staff available to do that. We had discussions about whether it rightly is in the executive's office, land use, the sheriff's office. Um, you know, I did reach out to each of those entities and all of them were like, well, if they want us to do it, then they need to get us another staff person because we don't have the capacity in our office. So that was kind of the conversation that I had with your leadership about whether or not to move forward with including the $250 fee in our ordinances and whether we wanted to actually go ahead and do that. Thank you. What numbers? Jackie, go ahead. I, I just wanted to share. I did meet with Mary on this last week. If nothing else, I have learned of the 102 counties in the state of Illinois, there are 102 ways to do anything. Mm -hmm. And it seems to be that that is how things are done. And that goes for every office, whether you're talking about the supervisor of assessments, the county board, the sheriff, it's like everybody does their own thing. It's kind of the wild, wild west. We could even determine, and this is my question, not to collect the fee at this time because we do believe that you know it would be a burden on some department. Could we at a later time decide that we wanted to based yes. on revenues? And so therefore I would say, you know, it's probably okay to skip it for now and then we see what happens in the future. Um, possibly, honestly, I'd probably want to turn this over to the treasurer's office. Seems like they would be um maybe a better candidate to collect it just because they collect money and they send out bills and this is something they already kind of do. Um, and then that would give us time to figure out, is there a software we should purchase or is there something, you know, off the shelf that we can just use like an Excel file and, you know, just regular outlook and create labels and send bills, et cetera, et cetera. But I would be perfectly okay with not collecting, you know, for the initial period and then just kind of seeing how it goes. And if we have to hire somebody at that point, we'll have the revenues from the actual machines and it would be self-funding and no cost uh, to the general revenue line. So those are my thoughts. Okay. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and that, go ahead. So it's per year, right? The, the 250 is per year, it's, it's not per term. It, it's per terminal per year. Oh, it is per terminal, okay. Correct. And at this point, the grandfathered ones would not get it. They, we have not charged the fee in the past. Um, so that doesn't mean we couldn't one. impose one going forward. That does not compromise their status as having the approval to operate a terminal. Okay, thank you. Okay, Julie. Thank you, Chair Ogala. Um, Mary, how many licenses do they anticipate we could have? I have no idea. How about staff? Have they looked at it? Because I, I would assume the license would be for existing built businesses. Like if you go to Cook County, you see them in Dunkin Donut or you see them in small shops. So have they looked at how many the potential? Have they even done any research into that? I don't know. Okay. So, um, I understand we're concerned with the cost of administering a license. Um, no, but we don't have license. License is not a, a portion of it. Uh, it's just uh, a, a fee. fee. A Correct. fee. Yeah. Um, but when 
people want to have a raffle or something like that, they have to uh, get a permit or, okay. So that seems to work um, very, very seamlessly and uh, doesn't seem to really cost us much money to issue these permits to these small organizations, um, but they have to pay. Um, Farm Bureau, small nonprofit that doesn't have a lot of money has to pay a permit uh, to have a raffle. Uh, with technology today, I don't understand. I'd love to have staff explain to us how this would be caught, how this would cost them a lot of money to <clears throat> have a administer a fee. So it's a little bit different. So when you're issuing a permit, the person doesn't get the permit unless they pay the fee. So there is no collection process on the back end. This would be a situation where staff would have to send out bills and would have to monitor who pays them. And then we would have to take it to administrative adjudication because they are, they are given their license and their permit through the state, not through the county. So we have no regulatory mechanism to stop them from operating their machines based upon our fee. We have no regulatory authority over video gaming. It is 100% in the hands of the gaming board. So we can require someone to have a permit to have a raffle, we, correct. but no. we cannot require them to pay this permit for we can require them to pay a $250 fee that would be split evenly between the property owner and the owner of the terminal. I'm just saying that what you need to decide, because you will have to incur the expense of collecting that fee. There is no easy mechanism like there is for a permit because we're not issuing permits. We're just imposing a fee. So it sounds like it's more of a technology issue. I mean, right now you can go for your driver's license online, renew it, pay a fee, get it in the mail, and never even see a, pe a person. So that I think is technology. Um, if our systems can't do that, can't do this online, um, then I, we we probably need to uh, put those I, I, improvements in our systems. So I'm I'm viewing it more from my collection perspective than a notifying them that they owe the fee perspective. Mm -hmm. um, so I I mean I just hear from people about you know well we have to pay to in order to perform certain things in the community. Uh, raffles and, and, and fees, um, but, but then we have something like this, which is a business expense and. So, we're not and going so to, they will, will, they will have to pay a tax to will County and we will get that. The state department of revenue will automatically collect our portion of the tax and remit it to will County. So you will be getting funding from these video gaming terminals. The question is, in addition to that tax, do you want to impose the $250 annual fee mm -hmm. on each terminal, knowing that we then on the backhand and need to establish some sort of a collection mechanism? And who sets the amount of the tax? That's set by state statute. Set by state. Correct. Okay. So, um, Who is going to provide the oversight for these businesses? Like, make sure that their legal age, if there's an issue, what happens? They reach out to county, don't they? Um, county they, resources? No, the Illinois Gaming Board is entirely so if, responsible. So if for, you're a business owner and you have um, unruly people coming in, um, let's say, um, you know, somebody's using, uh, gambling machines and there's a disruption for one month. What, what is a business? Well, I, I expect they'll call the sheriff's office if they have an unruly person. So then they need to call in county resources. Correct. Okay. Amiri, I wanted, I wanted to clarify something. So when they get their uh, license, 
for a liquor license? Is that an annual fee or is a one time fee? Those are annual fees. So a li liquor license is an annual fee. Correct. Okay. I'm going to add some stuff to this afterwards, but I'll let everyone continue talking. Uh, go ahead, Meta. Uh, my question was, um, how do we know what, since we don't regulate the, the slot machines, the gambling machines, how will we know that somebody has to pay that $250 fee? What triggers us knowing that they're getting that in their establishment? We, we would have to get that information from the Illinois State Gaming Board. Okay. I'm just thinking about like how, like when you were talking about collections on the back end and what that, and I hear what you're saying, but I was just like, well, wait a second. How do we know if we don't regulate, regulate it? In my head, we were going to be licensing these and that would be how, but you, when you pointed out, no, the state does that. Now I get it, but mm -hmm. you're okay. Um, and the 250 is only like, we're not charging the owner 250 and then 250 for each game or each machine. No, we could charge $250 for each terminal. And again, that would have to be split between the terminal owner and the property owner. So they would each be paying $125. Okay. We would have to send an invoice to each of them for each terminal. Well, not necessarily, well, right. but we would have Do one invoice that would indicate how many terminals they had and how much that would be. Okay. Yeah. I was not aware that we had very a lot of establishment owner that was not the terminal owners as well. So... Sure, that's all I wanted to know. Vince isn't here, but I, I know enough. So, oh, so the, the establishment doesn't have anything to do with the owning of the terminal. There's terminal operators that go by TOs, and then you have the establishment. The establishment, the, the terminal operator pretty much donates, allows the business owner to use these machines because they get equal percentage as the business owner. It's all regulated by the state. And I, I keep hearing Member Berkowitz say that there's in Cook County Dunkin' Donuts with these. I don't know how that's possible because it's directly tied to a liquor license. You cannot have these in Illinois if you don't have a liquor pouring license or you're a truck stop. So we're not talking about the truck stops, I don't think, but we're talking about the liquor license. I believe we have 52 or 54, 52 current liquor license. I think 19 of them currently have terminals in their business. They're grandfathered in somehow. I don't know if we've ever gotten to the bottom of how that happened. But so if we pass this next week, the other uh, 35 or so will immediately be eligible to go apply for a video gaming license. And we have access to that data already. It's not like we can't figure out who has these in their establishment because it's all on the Illinois Gaming uh, website. You can look right now at every municipality, county, whatever in the state, and they'll tell you exactly where they are and how many they have. It's also important to note that it's usually six. I don't know how they came up with that number, but you'll never see seven. And I, I don't think you'll ever see five. I think you can get three or six. Up to 10? Um, Mini Mart LLC has 10. Okay, so a lot of these questions we already know the answer to. The, the question I think we're asking is, should we charge $250 per terminal? And if we do, how do we collect it? And I'm open to a discussion on that, but I, I just did some quick numbers. It's significant, right? If, if all 52 of these um, establishments with liquor license decide to bring in six, we can make over a quarter million dollars a year. So it, it's probably something we should entertain if we're doing this to increase our revenue, which is, I think, why most of us are talking about it. Uh, it would probably be a good idea to figure it out. If we hire somebody, even that makes, I don't know what, uh, I don't want to insult anybody, but fifty-five, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year just to do this, we still make quite a bit of money. So, and I don't think it's that much work. You're doing it once a year for 52 businesses. I think we can hire someone to do it. And, and they, they could probably do more than just that. Thank you. So, so when I had the conversation with Steve, I wasn't in the meeting when Steve and Jackie met with Mary. Um, my, my point of view on this was as a government entity, we are always looking to a business owner to say, how can I take a little bit more of your money? How can I take a little bit more of your money? So the business owner pays his or her property taxes already. If they get a video machine, they're paying for whatever from the terminal license person to get it, I guess. And then we do benefit from the revenues that are generated from that. So that's an extra amount of money that we 
currently uh, benefit from uh, 300, I think it's $326,000 from that alone. So my, my perspective was, do we want to just keep putting on a fee and a fee and a fee and a fee? People complain that there's fees on everything they do. They want to build, build a house. So they got to pay a permit fee, the a site fee, all these different fees just to build a house, right? And then they're going to pay taxes on that house and things like that. So I thought it made sense to, you know what, we are getting the additional dollars from these, from the revenue that will be generated from these gaming machines. And I just thought, you know, a lot of the people who, not all, but a lot of people might be a small business guy who has this little bar and do we want to charge him 250, I guess it's 125 every year for each machine that he has. That was my perspective of thinking that why charge that fee? We'll be benefiting anyway from the additional machines that we would have. There are currently 19 out there, potential for, I don't know, what did you say, Frankie, how many possible? Uh, 52 times six. There you go, 52 times six. So we would have the potential of getting so much more revenue in just from the dollars collected. I know I sat down with Jim, we looked at all the different numbers of the machines and it seemed typical that one machine is bringing in about $3,000. From the from what we looked at, so um, it's just like that was my perspective of not charging a fee. If we wanted to charge a fee, you know, if they have to pay their liquor license annually to get it, then I thought possible. Then that would be a possibility. You get your liquor license, you pay your liquor license fee, you could pay that fee at the same time. So it would depend on what this board wants. I just I hear people. We just heard a bunch of people in Forest Preserve, and I hear people all the time. Do we want to continue to nickel and dime everybody for fees for absolutely everything? My opinion is no. I don't know what the rest of you think. Some people want as much money as we possibly get. So my opinion is no. Go ahead, Anna. Well, I know some of the small businesses who have the gaming machines in their business, their establishment, and they said if they didn't have them, there's no way they could stay open. Mm -hmm. But my point is they're bringing in a lot of money through these machines. So I don't think $125 a year, well, depending on how many machines I have, would hurt them that much. But they're not just paying that, they pay right. that, they're paying taxes on the revenue that they're making. So they're paying tax plus pay the additional fee on top of it. And their liquor license. How much is the uh, liquor permit? Do you know what that fee is? I, I don't, I could check at the ordinance. I can pull it up and see what our- Yeah, our when, when you get is. it, just let us know, yeah. so. I see. It. I tend to oh, agree. Yeah. Thank you, Chair Ogala. I tend to agree with Vice Chair uh, Parker. These businesses are making a lot of money off these machines, and these are our residents, the same residents that are probably crying they don't have money for their property tax um, because maybe they're shoving it into a gambling machine. So I don't think we should turn down any revenue. Um, going to what Member Berkowitz uh, intimated there that there could be some rowdy customers causing problems well then that's going to cost our sheriff's department time they're and money there already there. so to me if we have the opportunity we should do it my only concern was you know maybe we should not do it the first year that was the only thought that i had about it because i mean this does cost us money at some point as a county there's going to be a fee so right now any bar or, or any place that has liquor has the potential of having rowdy customers, regardless whether there's machines in the room or not. That statement is makes, no, I'll get to you in a minute. That statement makes no sense because they're there now. They're now drinking. If they're going to drink and play a game, maybe they're less likely to get rowdy because they're with a the machine they're engaged, not to the person sitting next to them getting angry at them for whatever, spilling beer on them. So, that that is that's a that's that that doesn't seem to make any any sense to me whatsoever. Frankie, go ahead. I want to echo that. So I know I went back and looked at the minutes from I think it was 2009 when the county board decided to not allow this in Will County, and it was based on kind of that. It's going to bring in riffraff. Well, there's there's zero evidence of that. These people that sit at these machines are usually not even drinking, right? So I agree. Th this is uh, kind of a misconception that gambling brings in a rowdy people they're going to fight um, who are they fighting with the machine so um i i don't think it's going to increase crime at all does that mean there couldn't be something that happened sure there's alcohol involved and we would need the, the sheriff's department to come but 
I, I just don't want to be talking. I don't want that to get out there that we're passing this and it's going to bring in fights and rowdiness because it just, it's not true. I didn't bring the topic up. Member Berkowitz yeah. did. Fair enough. And I wasn't like trying to invite a debate. Any, anyone else have another comment they'd like to make? Sure, Micah. I mean, Meta, sorry. Wrong M. It's okay. Go ahead. Can we, Mary, state attorney, can we charge the fee and see how collecting goes for a year with people just paying it? And then if we have a problem uh, and we have to start using a more collection type methodology, we could do something about it then? Sure, we can do that. I, I need to know from you who you want to do the billing and collection. Okay. Um, I think I, right. and the license fee for liquor is between, well, I mean, it ranges most of them around $2,000, $2,500, some are $1,500. Um, I, do, I don't think caterers in that would be relevant because I think those are just for one time fees. But so 2000 ish, depending on the license. Which department bills the liquor licenses? The executive's office. Oh, there's the liquor. Could we add this on to the liquor license bills? Um, Would that be. We could I creating the question, for somebody. Well, I suggesting that out loud. <laughs> so, so we just, I mean, that's, that's the discussion we had is, does it make sense to add it to the. Mm -hmm. bill for the liquor license and i mean i think we could the question is could we because we talked about too could we pull the liquor license if they don't pay the video gaming fee and i i don't think that they can because under the statute you can only deny a license a liquor license for certain reasons mm -hmm. um but we will dig deeper into that as a possibility if you want us to move forward with the fee um, but I'm inclined to think that we cannot pull the liquor license for their failure to pay the video gaming fee that they're separate issues, but I will check. I, and I wasn't thinking we pull their light liquor license over. I was thinking of the ease and with which we can uh, pass this fee on and, and collect it. Um, since they're already at a point of contact at the liquor license, that would be a good time to do it. In my opinion, I'd like to hear what everyone else thinks. Jackie, you have your light on. Are you going to say yeah. anything else? Can uh, you withhold the renewal of a liquor license if they don't pay the fee? I don't, I don't think so because okay. the statute you basically you says you can only deny a license mm -hmm. for reasons set forth in the Liquor um, Control Act. Mm -hmm. um, I will double check to make sure that they have not added video gaming to that, but I will look. And I know I, you weren't expecting this question today. Yeah, and nope, that's you fine. know, if the answer is no, we could certainly lobby our legislators to add that to the the law. Okay, so it seems like you have several different questions that were asked that you have to look in to get us the answers for. So I would like to get a motion for um, moving postponing one, two, and three. We'll do them individually, of course, because we I think we have to do them all individually till next month so we can get the answers from Mary. You guys have had the discussion. You've heard more about it. You've heard people uh, different opinions, at least from this committee, as to whether they think uh, you should charge that fee or not. Seems like most of you are in support of a fee. And Steve and I would be the oddballs out there. Um, but there's the whole board. So Mary, we're going to, I'm going to ask to postpone all three items to next month so you can get us that information. Okay. And I'll work on drafting then the resolution for the fee to have the county executive collect it as part of the billing that goes out for the liquor license. Right. And what we'll do is okay. just put all the different options on the agenda with the fee, without the fee, and we can decide that day and vote which ones we're going to support or oppose. Okay. Okay, so can I get an motion to uh, postpone item number one? Motion Mueller, second Berkowitz. Yeah, I need a roll call. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Turn the mic on. Parker? Yes. Berkowitz? Freeman? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Pretzel? No. Richmond? Trenier? 
Williams? Yes. Ogala? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Can I get a motion to um, postpone item number two under old business until oh. next month? Motion Trenier, second Previous Freeman. Second. Previous second. Mueller, second Parker. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries. Can I get a motion to postpone item number three under old business until next month? Motion Berkowitz, second Mueller, previous Freeman, second Trainier. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, we don't have any other old business. Um, number one um, under new business is authorizing payment to Family Guidance Center Incorporated for operations of, for, of costs for their mobile outreach services. And this was moved here from finance, it was put on finance, so they moved it to us. I get a motion to put it on the table. Motion trainer, second Mueller. Okay. Just give the background. Yeah, Kim's gonna give a little background here for you. When this was up at um, finance this month, there was a presentation by family guidance centers and they were discussing needing the additional funding. And one of the questions that was put out there was whether it could be done, the money could be given as they came in and billed us for it as they used it. Uh, Marcy, I believe, and Rashawn spoke about it and they don't think that is the best way to go about it. They feel that if you are in favor of giving them the money, you can give them the money. Once we have the agreement in place, then you can also in, uh, have reporting requirements. So that was just the background. Um, I know that, that when they came the last time they went the 75 because they weren't, they wanted to be sure the money was in the account because we don't know when the opioid money is coming in. Is it there now to cover all of this? Yes. Okay, thank yeah, you. The money is there. Oh. Marcy, do you happen to know that? How much money would be left after that payment? There's currently just over something over half a million dollars. And remember, Micah, this money is is the opioid funds. There's very restrictive rules as to what we can use those dollars right. for. I understand. So that. not saving for a rainy day doesn't really get I us. I just remember the conversation was also we don't want to deplete because there's other agencies that are coming. Well, we forward, could deplete. So. We could use everything um, that we have and decide to spend the rest later. We can make can make that decision. We don't need to save it. We could do that. So um, I was just curious me. if there was money and how much was left. Thank you. Yeah, Jackie, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to suggest that uh, perhaps we do this very similar to how we did the ARPA fund. As and I'm speaking specifically, you know, for like townships, they were awarded a certain dollar amount. They didn't get the money until they spent the money. Um, you know, they have basically a, a bank account with us and as they spend it and they give us the receipts, we pay it out. Um, the Amplement Fund system mm -hmm. seems to work pretty quickly. Uh, I know a lot of vendors, especially if they're dealing with like a unit of government or, you know, some sort of not-for-profit, you know, there's usually a 30 to 60 day billing period. So it's, it seems within the realm of possibilities that they could handle it this way. But I, I do think that if we're going to support this project, we need to put all the funding forward, whether we hand them a check or whether we, you know, hand it out as they use it to me is just a choice we can make unless the rules around the op opioid money prevent that. But I know last I heard there was like, an agreement that had to be worked out like and procedures and policies and i'm not intimately if you know familiar with those so i think mary has some information for so me. so to your point i did work on amending the arpa agreement um to utilize it in the opioid grant program and the agreement that i have drafted and forwarded to the county executive because the county executive is the one who's going to have to administer this so i wanted to make sure i had the processes and procedures in there properly um, but I did provide for a um, program where they would expend the money and then be re reimbursed because then we can be assured we get mm -hmm. the documentation necessary to show that they actually used it for those purposes. But I will say I had a lot of questions when I was trying to draft the agreement because you have 
you know, straightforward single purchases such as the van, but then there's the potential that you will use the money for certain operations where maybe an employee is being paid, or I don't know, are they going to be paying rent or is there, there are these other things and what are the processes that we want in place to show that on an ongoing basis, they are actually meeting those needs or, you know, to the point that once we have the van, the family guidance center has the van using them as an example, they are then proposing to go out into the neighborhoods to provide services. What documentation are we going to require from them that they are actually doing those services? So are we going to get reports on a monthly basis saying you had encounters with X number of people that you handed out this much literature? I, I, you know, so right now it's, it's, you know, pretty, I tried to incorporate those elements, but I'm looking for feedback from the people who will actually be boots on the ground and administering this program. Thank you. Just to follow up with you. So our portion of ARPA funds at my township where I work, we are required to put in various reports to get the money back. And we have done just exactly what you talked about. We've bought supplies for the summer camp. We've paid employees, temporary employees for the summer camp. So we've turned in not only Amazon receipts, but payroll reports. We have purchased vehicles where we had to send, not only send in the invoice for the vehicle, but the proof that we bought it through a competitive bidding process or a uh, cooperative uh, seller. And we've had to do all of that. And it's been fairly simple. Um, we did it through Amplifund. I don't know if that's what the county executive would use that same program. I, I can't speak to that, but the system works very, very easily. Um, and we're a small township and we managed to, you know, muddle through the paperwork. Um, I would think that anybody that's coming to us that, you know, wants money, you know, any not for profit that's going to be serving the community would have those same abilities. Um, well, and then it, one of the other, you, you caused me to remember one of the other questions I had as I was drafting the agreement is, you know, if they have used the money for a capital purchase, how long are we going to require them to keep that capital purchase? And what is the process of disposing of it if they choose that's to get a, rid of it? That's because a good question. We I don't, don't want that. us to be in a situation where someone buys a large and, mm -hmm. and using the van and in no way saying family guidance has any intent to do this, but what if they sell the van a month later? Yeah, I mean, we, we need to make sure that doesn't happen. So, uh, I mean, I, I put in the agreement that they have to keep it for 5 years and then contact the county when it's disposed of, but I don't know if that's the right answer. Yeah. It's just something that I threw out there as a possibility. No, and I understand why you might want to do that because yeah. I've seen other things where you're required to do stuff for so many years. I would just say that, like, at the township, we bought. Well, 2 trucks and a, a, a van and a truck and another truck that's on order. That someday will be delivered. We hope, um, and and there was no requirement that I'm aware of in the ARPA bill that we had to keep it. There was in our agreement. In our ARPA agreement, there was a requirement was. that okay. you do notify the government entity when you disposed of it. Um, they would then give you guidelines as to how to to dispose Dang. it, and the money mm -hmm. had to be returned to the government entity minus the cost of disposing it. So that That's was a lot actually of fine in print there. that I don't think we yep. read. <laughs> yeah, that's in there. Yeah, so one thing with an organization like this that's different than, say, a township is township has funds available, and the family guidance doesn't have funds available up front all the time to, to pay for some of this. That's why they're asking for it. And again, it's just specific information. And you mentioned about a five year thing for the van. Well, it should be five years or so many miles. We don't know how, you know, well, I mean, I, so many options like I, our. Vehicle I agree. replacement. I don't know exactly what the answer is. I put a, I threw a number in there and I highlighted it for for yeah. conversation because I I don't know what. Well, so do yeah. we have the agreement? I I have it at the executive right now because they are the ones who would have to administer it. So before I sent it to county board, I wanted their feedback on okay. what works within your structure and what doesn't. Okay, so I think we had some good conversation. Again, more questions. We don't have the agreement ready yet, so I'm going to make a motion. I'd like to get a motion to move this, postpone this till next month. It's better to be safe than sorry, have everything in place as we need it. So motion Mueller, second Parker, previous Richmond, second Williams, all in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries, thank you. So far we're postponing away.
we have to be right. And this is the first one, first group we're moving outside of the county. So we want to make sure we can do that. Okay, number two, I think we're going to be able to do this one. Transferring appropriations within various county budgets. Motion Mueller. Second Trainier. Previous. Previous Parker. Second Richmond. All in favor? Aye. Add pretzel to what? Do you want to be added? Okay, so we'll add them there. And he's, he's here for this one, all in favor? All in favor? Okay, any opposed? Motion carries. Number three, authorizing the county executive to execute Workforce Investment Opportunity Act contract for work readiness training with Joliet Junior College Workforce Education. Can I get a motion? Motion Mueller, second Freeman. Previous William, second Parker, all in favor? Uh, Any opposed? Motion carries. Number four, authorizing the county executive to execute Workforce Investment Opportunity Act contract for occupational skill training for youth and with the Joliet Junior College. Can I get a motion? Motion Mueller, second Freeman, previous Williams, second, second Richmond, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number five, authorizing the Will County Executive to renew the Will County One Stop Operator Agreement. Can I get a motion? Motion Mueller, second Berkowitz. Previous role Parker, second Williams, all in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Number six, declaring vehicles as surplus and authorizing disposal. Motion by Motion Williams, second Parker. Previous row, Trainier, second uh, Freeman, all in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries. Number seven. Declaring various equipment surplus and authorizing donation. Motion Freeman, second Mueller. Previous Williams, second Richmond, all in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries. Number eight, endorsing the Good Food for All resolution at NACO. Can I get a motion for this? Motion Mueller, second Williams. Any discussion? Previous Freeman, second Berkowitz, all in favor? Motion, any opposed? Motion carries. And number nine is recommendation for a fence to be installed around the property at 14 West Jefferson Street. Motion Williams, second Berkowitz. Previous Parker. Previous Parker, second Mueller. Chain leak, barbed wire, electrified. What is it? There's nothing here. So the recommendation came from the ad hoc old courthouse committee. So I think the recommendation to install, we can determine what we might want to do. Mm. Oh, Sherry, go ahead. Yes. What do we have now? Sherry, could you turn? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Put your mic on. Sorry. Thank you, Kim. Yeah. What is what is currently around there, which is chain link? I think it is. I'm not sure. But yeah, yeah, I don't know what that's called. Oh, with the now. fabric, so you can't see in. <laughs> yeah. So you're. This is a suggestion to do that until we have the grass in, right. grass in place. So it's a temporary. That maybe. That might be a law. That might be an ordinance in the in the city. I don't know this for sure, but I know that when something is being demolished or in the process of being returned to yeah, that grassland, we have to keep a fence around it. I don't know if that's true in Joliet. We might have to ask, but it may we might already have to do that by law. So or by code is what I should say. I by know. code, we might already have to do that. I'm not sure. Maybe yes, it's we, worth checking into. Chime in on that since you mentioned, you know, Joliet. I know from talking with uh, our executive director at the Forest Preserve. They don't follow city ordinances, rules, land use procedures, whatever, in any community that they're working in. Mm -hmm. There's like this rule or whatever, and I'm probably not using the right word, but they follow the code of the county. So it might be the same thing for us that we would only have to follow some sort of county code if there is one. And I don't think we've gotten that far in the ordinance book <laughs> on what you do yeah. with vacant yeah. property. Um, but if that operates the same way that then 
I would say, suggest that we only have to follow our own codes. I don't even know that we would follow the city of Joliet's codes for building a building. I believe we follow our own codes. And I don't know why it is that way. And I, if Ralph was here, he could probably explain it. But um, I remember this specifically when it came to the issue of Hidden Oaks um, and the changes we were making out there in Bolingbrook, they didn't have to follow Bolingbrook building code. So there, there may be an exception for the Forest Preserve. I know okay. there are exceptions for schools. The schools have to follow the code set by the State Board of Education, but we did have to follow the City of Joliet building code when we built the the adult detention facility and our other buildings. Okay, when thank you. That were so then we would want to know. Yes. Yeah. If you have reached out to Joliet, we have not gotten a response. So but um also too if there is any um if any suggestion of anything else, what other kind of yeah. fencing that would anybody would want then we're and this is that temporary? Well we would there's going to be um we would like to see it enclosed <laughs> so that it just discourages people from just being on the property. So it could be a permanent fence as well. So that, that also has to be discussed. I just wouldn't think that chain link would be all well, that attractive. Which is and why we, even with the fabric barrier that they put on. Yeah. Which is why we can discuss whatever kind of fence it is. And we didn't discuss costly or anything either. So that would also have to be So really determined. this maybe should just be like an R, a so, recommendation to go out for an RFQ or something. Yeah, I think we need to, we can make the decision what type of fence we want to have, but I'm going to have Kim put a little information out there first. I did not attend the ad hoc courthouse meeting this month because I was not in the office, but after I did uh, reach out to Dave Tack in regard to the fencing and he indicated in uh, response to it that the current fencing is leased by the demolition contractor and scheduled to remain in place until the grass takes root. So that's going to be a little while. So I think that maybe this recommendation doesn't need to go forward and the committee can continue to discuss how they want with specifics when it's post uh, the scene taking place. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead, Jackie. So I have a follow up question for um, Kim. You mentioned till the seed takes hold or the grass takes hold. This is like the worst time of the year to plant any grass anywhere unless you got a whole sprinkler system there so i'm really hoping they're not going to plant anything until like late september uh because it's just going to die if it's sod it'll be dead if it's grass seed the birds will eat it before it grows or it'll be full of weeds i mean i would assume the con i don't know what the contract says but i would assume the contract cuz it's all part of the contract right. to demo it so I would assume that they would go ahead and put it down. It could it could rain. We've had a lot of rain lately. You know, and I'm not sure what the particulars are, whether it's grass or sod. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what's in the contract so, either. I just yeah. If it has the fence has to stay up until the grass is taken hold, this could be till next spring. Right. Well, it gives us plenty of time to have the conversation. Yeah. About what we're going to do there, what what type of fence we'd like to see. Um, and and then make decisions, other decisions on how we might go ahead and develop the property. So, do you know? Go. I'm. They just didn't say when they were going to plant, or they just said that they would. They, they anticipating them planting by July is all that we heard. So right. I'm assuming that yeah, that they're going to go ahead and plant. So I will ask Mr. Tack to keep us up to okay. date on where that is. Go ahead, Jim. I think he said seed mat they were going to put down. Seed mat? Yeah. I, that's what I remember him saying, I think so. You're probably right. It's but you're right. It's not, yeah, and it's not going to, nothing's going to happen until September. So. Okay. So I think, Julie. I just want to mention that it might have been two months ago, Dave joined our committee. He had his idea board. And we had a very lengthy discussion about possibilities. And one of those was to work with um, in conjunction with the forest preserve or someone uh, knowledgeable, but to plant a um, natural uh, perennial garden that would benefit um, wildlife and butterflies. And that is on our, I'll call it our idea board. So Dave is very aware of that. Um, so I'm hoping that that is um, 
in play. So, um, but if maybe he wants to come in and share that with the committee next month and he can bring his big board to where he wrote it down. But yeah, we did have that conversation. Then, then I would suggest we need to figure out what's going on because it doesn't make any sense to put seed mat down and let grass grow and then dig it all up. I would be digging it all if we're going to plant pollinator plants. Oh, the whole and, the whole property you know. wouldn't be. I mean, it could be certain gardens, yeah. but I think it's good we had the conversation. Yeah, I will take it to the Republican caucus. We'll be meeting next week. The Democrats can have that conversation. We had a conversation here. We have to have the conversation of how we're going to move forward with that parcel besides just doing grass. So we'll just go ahead, continue that conversation. So, okay, that was just on here for conversation anyway. So next we move to number 10 proclamations. We have three proclamations this month. One is pride month and uh, Jackie will be reading that. The other is father's day. Uh, Raquel Mitchell will be reading that. And the third is D day uh, and Steve will be reading that. Um, so, so as you, as you see, uh, pride and father's day will be read from the desk and D day will be read from the podium. So if I could get to some motion to. They're going to come in and do what? So do you wanted to do it from the podium and have them sit stand with you? Oh, Frankie. So I'm just going to say it. I know in our caucus, we talked literally last June about bringing forward these controversial proclamations. And here we are bringing the same one forward that caused a lot of the problems last year. Not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying we all know that it is controversial and I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to prove my point by the comments that are going to come right after this, but it is controversial. Is this something that we want to do as a county board? Yeah, so, so having that conversation again, this is a vote on the executive committee and I do like to do different proclamations. During the 2 years that I will be in the seat, um, do different proclamations um, every year so that we can recognize different things. So that's why father's day and D day are something different than last year. I do know that we did have comments. So. We will go ahead and make, we can, left off June team, but, uh, nobody brought that proclamation forward. So that's why, you know, we don't have to do the same proclamations every month, I, every year. I prefer that we have something, we recognize something different. That way we hear about during the reading of the proclamation, we hear different information on a regular basis. Um, it, we can go ahead and vote on these one at a time. If you guys want to move them forward or not, that's fine with me. Okay. Sounds but like you turn yourself off. Large group of people have been invited already. I don't want to get in the way of that. I just here we are again, bringing forth the exact thing that caused the huge debate on the floor last year. And I know our caucus talked about this. I thought we were in agreement. Maybe we didn't talk about it as a full board. But is this really the path we want to go down? Is it okay that I bring the gun owners in for July? Well, that's that's. I want to proclaim. July gun owners month. Right. I, right. I, I've tried like, not to. And I'm, I am being, I'm, things move forward. Well, listen, I'm being antagonistic here because I know that this is controversial. My opinion doesn't even matter on it. We all know it's controversial. So, well, you know, it's controversial. That doesn't mean you have to agree that it should be, but it just is. So that's just my opinion. Here we go again. That's all I'm saying. Uh, I would just say that if it's sold in Walmart and Target, I mean, there's Pride Month, everything, everywhere. Um, clearly, the general pop population uh, is not considering this controversial. There may be sects or groups that do, but the general population does not look at this as being controversial. If they did, there would be protests in front of every store that markets. Yeah, 
materials to the LBGTQ community? Okay, um, well, and as Frankie said, here we are again, and we didn't make a decision on this last time, and we probably should have, what, what kind of proclamations. We just kind of pushed it along. So maybe this is a decision this board does need to make at some point. I have no problem with the LGBTQ um, proclamation at all. I don't have any problem with most of the proclamations. However, if we're going to have some problems, we need to establish some guidelines for our proclamations. We haven't done that. You're right, Sherry, so that each caucus should should do that, but we have three proclamations. We can definitely vote to move one or two or three forward or none of them forward here today if we wanted to. Next will be seat seven, which is Julie. Thank you, Chair O'Gala. So for some of our uh, youngest members, uh, the previous board, uh, we had made a decision and we had discussions at length because every month we were getting three, four, there were half a dozen proclamations everyone wanted um, to be brought forward. And we got to the point where we were like spending, you know, a half an hour on proclamations. And uh, then there was the push to not spend the time we needed on the other business. Uh, that deserved more time and discussion. So that prior board had made the decision to to reduce the number of proclamations. That that's on the record. We can go back and look at our look at our um, our uh, minutes. And now we're back to the point where I I don't recall last month. It, it might have it was a substantial t amount of time uh, to present all of the proclamations. And we're looking at, here's three more, and we're looking at the same situation. So, you know, we have county board members that have been upset that our meetings aren't done within an hour and we're not out the door and they wanna move on people. So again, if we're gonna look at history, we have had multiple discussions about not necessarily the content of these proclamations, but um, is this county business? So, um, you know, we we come to the county to represent everyone in the, in the county, no matter who they are. Uh, it's, there's no reflection. So I would just like to request uh, Chair O'Gala that we have a lengthy discussion about our policy regarding uh, uh, proclamations in the future. And as far as um, today goes, uh, you know, I, I think that, let's take a look at okay, what Julie, happens. So I will, I, next month at first executive, we'll have that conversation about proclamations. Yeah, I, and thank you, decision. I think that would be appropriate. Okay. Um, Meta, you're next. Thank you. I just want to remind everyone that um, all of us sitting up here have the option to vote yes or no for the things that are on these agendas. And we do spend a lot of time together discussing all the options. Um, lots of times we're being very repetitive. And I think that, you know, I understand some folks don't support certain resolutions. That's why they have the ability to vote no against that resolution. And those who agree with it have the ability to vote yes for the resolution. And then we can take the count of the votes and move on. Um, I'm sorry that it hurts people's feelings if they don't get what they voted for or whatever, but this is how it works. That's how this is supposed to work. We're not supposed to spend eight hours lamenting on the same points we've made all month long. So we vote yes or we vote no. We all get to make our comments, but it's, it's really, really, really repetitive. And that is what frustrates folks, I think, with these long meetings. Thanks. Vote yes or no. Move on. So I think I'm next by by putting forth controversial resolutions. You're right. We can vote no, but it's putting unnecessary uh, burden on this board in a time you saw it today when we actually had something that's important that we not that this isn't important something that affects every taxpayer in Will County. Right? We voted on to spend to go to bond on a, on a large amount. Yeah. There are a lot of things that this board has to decide that 
we rightfully should debate on the floor. Resolutions should not be one of them. They shouldn't. It's, this is like a self-inflicted harm we're putting on ourselves because we know it's controversial. If you don't believe it's controversial, if you want to point to companies like Walmart, and I, I believe me, I see it on every ad that I get on my email. But just ask Anheuser-Busch if, if this is something that you want to touch. How did it work out for them? So I, I'm not going to keep debating this with you guys because it's not, I don't want it to come across as I don't support this. That's not what I'm getting at. I'm saying we all know this is controversial and we're deciding, we're, we're choosing right now to bring this to the floor. It's going to suck all the oxygen out of the room. People's tempers are going to flare like we've seen. It's just, it's not healthy for the board. So for that reason, I'm going to actually work really hard to eliminate resolutions from what we do. Okay, and I'm sorry. Proclamation. Resolution stay. I remember last year there was a big to do, but I don't recall. Did we not read any? We did not. So we just pulled everything and just had that. Okay. I believe people walked Thank out you. of the room. Well, people came to speak. So the public yeah. did come to speak on it. And um, it would, unfortunately, the public will make comments according to how they feel. Um, I would hope that the public could not slam one side of the aisle for the other side of the aisle because nobody knows anybody in the room and and what their true point is views are or not regardless of what political party you're on so okay we're going to do micah micah was first then meta and then i'd like to we'll go for a vote so i have i've already um think i've gone on the record before saying that i'm perfectly okay not having any of these mm -hmm. um and that being said, I do think that we need to look at a procedure or something. Um, I thought that we had agreed to nationally celebrated things, but I guess I was wrong because now I'm hearing we don't have an agreement. Um, so we obviously need to have a clearer path forward. That's all. Are, are you going to not speak? No. Okay, so I just wanted to say one thing. So as a chair of this board, I, I try and make decisions that I feel that are fair. We have 50% of the board is Democrat, 50% of the board is Republican. So I try and, and respect that. I know that not all of you feel that I make good enough efforts, but I make the best efforts that I think has ever been made. But um, we're gonna go ahead and we can vote for each one of these proclamations, whether they move forward or they don't move forward. And then next month we will have a decision, uh, a discussion on what we want to do moving forward with proclamations, yes or no, what ones, what ones we don't want to ever touch. And um, that may last a month or two, so I'm not sure, but we'll put it on for next month. So if I could get a motion um, for proclamation for Pride Month, motion Mueller, second Trenere. We had plenty of discussion. Could I get a roll call, please? Oh, yes. You always want the mic on, Terry. I know. <laughs> Parker. Yes. Berkowitz. Yes. Freeman. I'm sorry. Yes. Mueller. Yes. Pretzel. No. Richmond. Yes. Trenier. Yes. Williams. Yes. Ogala. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, proclamation number two is uh, honoring Father's Day. Can I get a motion? Mueller. Motion Mueller. Second. Second Parker. Can I get a roll call? Parker. Yes. Berkowitz. D, uh, Freeman. Yes. Mueller. Yes. Pretzel. No. Richmond. Yes. Trenier. Williams? Yes. Sorry, Ogala? Yes. Motion passes. And the third one is for D Day, honoring D Day. Motion Mueller, second Parker. Can I get a roll call, please? Parker? Yes. Berkowitz? Yes. Freeman? Mueller? Yes. Pretzel? Richmond? Trenier? Yes. 
Williams? Ogala? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. So that's good. Votes here and there. We'll have that conversation about proclamations um, next month. Thank you. Okay, so next we move on to item number 11, which is appointments by the county executive. And that is approving the county executive appointments to the Board of, of Health of Will County. Can I get a motion? Motion Mueller, second Freeman. Uh, Parker. Yes. Berkowitz. Yes. Freeman. Yes. Mueller. Yes. Pretzel. Yes. Richmond. Yes. Trenier. Yes. Williams. Yes. Ogala. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Next we move to other new business. I do not have any other new business. Request for state attorney to thank Next, we have committee reports, which is this is the yeah, thanks. You uh, let me just do like a little recap here. So, we had um, two items under new business. Both of them, I believe, failed. Um, so make sure you come prepared on that one. It's the first one was for a truck terminal in um, Wilmington County Board District Number One, and the second one was a solar project in Shanahan County, also County Board District Number One. Uh, that's it. Then we had something uh, a request for a refund for the building a building permit. Vermoni Fire Protection District. Uh, that one passed unanimously six to zero. Excellent. Thank you so much for that information. Next, we move on to finance. Chair Richmond. Oh, sorry, Jim. Want to put your mic on, please? Thank you. Um, so we didn't have a lot of stuff. Uh, we did have the folks from Hero come out as well as Family Guidance. They gave their presentation. Um, also, too, as Rashawn gave us a presentation on the fund balances and that as of May 31st, um, if you look at them, you know, uh, uh, just as an overview, you're going to say it doesn't look so good. But what we're going to do is Rashawn's going to come back in August. It's because the property tax bills, a lot of that revenue has not hit the books yet. Um, okay. Okay. All right. Yep. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, and also, too, is uh, well, for the hero folks, it looks like we're going to have to uh, postpone it. Is that postpone it until you work on the agreement? Because that's something that um, these things are new with the way we're spending the money in the state's attorney's office and the reporting and all that. So uh, staff is working on getting together the appropriate documentation so that we are everybody's happy at the end of the day. Right. Including the taxpayer, um, and that was uh, basically about it. Um, yeah, that was about it. Okay, Kim, you wanted to add something, please. I was just going to say, in regard to the hero at the finance committee, they did move that forward to the full board. But based on our discussions here today with Mary and the working out of the agreement, that it most likely will need to be a motion to table it until the following month, till we get it resolved. Thank, thank you, Kim. Okay, next we move to public works and transportation. Joe's not here. So Joe's not here, so I'll uh, I'll do the best I can at filling in on that. Um, actually, uh, this is the time of year where it's mainly just a lot of approval of work in that construction projects and that. Um, just the only two things is that there was a note that the Briggs Street I 80 congestion is going to continue on for a couple of weekends or that. So just made a, uh, Jeff made everybody aware of that. And also, too, is our 2025, 2030. I'm trying to find where it was at on here. Uh, we had the discussion about that. Um, number two. Oh, there it is there. Thank you, Kim. Uh, and just that we were uh, discussing that and adopting that and moving it forward, the improvement projects for 2025 uh, to 2030. So. Okay. All right. And uh, thank you for that, Jim. 
Next, we move to public health and public safety. Chair Raymond. We didn't have anything to bring forward. We did have some discussion over the um, and the monthly reports. Um, I was really impressed that already this year were 3,392 um, more Narcan has been distributed than the previous year. Um, the Will County Health Department is going to have to get some nine counters in their community health center. They are 20 years old, but they are going to be able to um, take care of that hopefully within their budget. Um, they're also running out of space at the 501 Ella and they're working on that and moving things around. Um, it looks like they're just kind of growing and growing, which is a good thing. Um, what was the other one? Oh, the tick surveillance. I thought, thought it was interesting that a female tick does not have to have a male to reproduce and they can lay up to 2,000 eggs at a time, which is really scary. Um, and then Maggie McDowell went through and, and explained the mandates and explained that she is going to um, use the bed tax to help cover the mattresses. She'll have to phase in certain wings at a time um, over the next couple of years. And they had a wedding at the nursing home so that grandma could be there. And I thought that was really cool too. That was it. Thank you. I don't know if more Narcan being passed, Narcan being passed out or not is a good thing. It's unfortunate that we have to have Narcan. You know, I mean that's a, that's a sad thing. If you want to, so like, we would love to think we only need it if we're using it, but it's, for instance, my daughter lived in a town home and there were two overdoses next door, and if she would have had it, she would have been able to administer it. And you know, there's perks to saving a life. I agree. I think it's just a shame that society today. I agree with that, but um, I think we need to have it so that we can start the reversals and not have the deaths. So, okay. Next, we move to uh, Chair Berkowitz for legislative, please. Wait, turn, on turn your mic. mic. Thank you. Uh, so we just had um, we had our state led our state lobbyist and our federal lobbyists with us and um, they are not in session at this time. So they're just watching and if there's anything of concern, they'll reach out to us. But at this time we have nothing really moving forward. So we'll be looking at next month then. Thank you, Julie. You're welcome. Next we move on to capital improvements in IT. Meta, hang on a second. Hi everybody. Uh uh, we had our usual reports from uh, maintenance staff regarding the various capital things going on around the the county. Um, wanted to give you guys, let you guys know that they're almost done putting the roof on the adult detention facility. Um, the fun thing that he told us about is that uh, if you're familiar with Weatherbug, it's an app you can put in your phone for the weather. We're getting a Weatherbug cam on the courthouse, the new courthouse. So you'll be able to check it and see exactly what's happening down here for the weather. Um, and, uh, you know, we just kind of went along. We talked about the facilities assessment um, and actually moving something to executive that I kind of didn't ask Judy about. So I apologize. I will make sure I do that before I leave today. Um, and that's about it, guys. So, you know, check on our reports on the agenda if you want to catch up. So thanks. Thanks, Meta. Okay, moving on to executive. You guys heard enough out of me today. Moving on to landfill. Uh, they did not have a meeting this month, so there's no update there. Uh, ad hoc reports. So uh, ad hoc access will county. Um, they didn't meet. To, they didn't meet yet. Uh, no, after this. They meet after this, and chair is not here. And oh, I don't see him. Because he's behind you. <laughs> Come on down. No, I didn't see him at all back there. Can you press press the press number nine? Wait. There you go, Dan. You're on. Okay. So the last time we met, we had received some surveys back from different township supervisors. Uh, after going through them, most of them 
were satisfied with the service they had and really didn't require much more. There was a few of them that would have didn't have any service that would just like to pretty much get a service that handles what will ride does. Uh, so I'm not looking for any major improvements. I know staff and uh, chair Ogala was uh, investigating or trying to set up something where we could have someone from PACE come and talk with us. So we're waiting to see the results of that. And I think uh, soon we should be coming to some sort of resolution. Thank you, Dan. Okay, next is the ad hoc old courthouse and we have Sherry Williams who's Janet's not here today. Thanks, Sherry. Yeah. And basically we did talk about the fencing and then we're still trying to um, Get some ideas as to what we would like to see done with the space, and that's pretty much it. Thank you, Sherry. And closing with the ad hoc ordinance review, Vince was here. He's not here. Whoever wants to. Go ahead, Micah. It is a very slow process. Um, we are trudging our way through it. Hopefully we will have a section at some point to bring forth. Um, it'll be very large in, in reading and it's great nighttime stuff. So um, <laughs> it's very riveting, but we are hoping we we decided, I think, didn't, correct me if I'm wrong, Sherry, but didn't we decide to break it up into smaller sections and bring it to the board rather than bring the whole thing? That's so we're still idea. working on that and um, it is still going to be quite a bit of reading. Okay. So prepare yourselves. Thanks for that update. Um, Kim mentioned to me that we have to go back to item number 10. I need to either do a motion to um, postpone till next month or just item number nine. Why did I say that? Yeah, not number nine under new, new business recommendation for a fence to be installed around the property. So we can postpone it or just remove it and put it back on the ta table. Yep. We could send it back to committee. I think we should send it back to motion to send it back to committee by Freeman, second by Berkowitz. Previous role. No, we can't do previous role. We can. Oh, appointments by the executive. Previous role by Williams, second by Mueller. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, that brings us to public comment. And we do have somebody from the public who would like to come up. Been very he has. He's been here for the 10 o'clock meeting. Let's press, press the little man. <laughs> Just let us know your name and go ahead. Well, my name is John Doolin. Uh, I do uh, appreciate the fact that you all are willing to be here and work your way through launch. I know how difficult that could be. Um, but I am with a licensed terminal operator uh, in the state of Illinois. And we do have several clients um, that fall within the county jurisdiction uh, who could benefit greatly from uh, you guys uh, reversing the prohibition on video gaming. Uh, and I, I just wanted to thank you guys for, for your time and consideration and um, just uh, encourage you to vote in favor of, of that reversal. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Jen. Announcements and reports by the chair. I just have one thing that I wanna make you guys aware of. Um, I've heard about this once before, extending enterprise zone, uh, a young lady from in, 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 in Energy uh, stopped by yesterday, um, just happened to be in the office. The she gave me a little document here. I can leave with staff there and you could see it. Uh, this is a, a company. They're currently stationed in Chicago at 1 South Wacker Drive. And um, they are going to be building, they're, they're remodeling actually an uh, existing facility in Bolingbrook. And they're going to have it called Center of Excellence. And what they're going to do is a lot of training there. So they'll have, they'll train approximately 100 to 150 people a month because it's a, it's six so it's more a month and a half I guess it's a six week training program and it's for uh, the type of different energy sources that they are involved with and that includes um, solar wind gas and uh, I lost the last one um, here it is probably here and uh, 
battery storage. So they're looking at training. Um, they also mentioned that they would do anything that we would want. So like when we had the conversation at land use regarding solar facilities and, and battery storage and the fire department say, what do we do? What do we? They would put together training sessions though. Our local fire departments could come and do that. They said they'd be willing to help do that once they're, once they have something right now, it's a remodel disaster, you know, in the middle of it. Um, they would go ahead and have a tour for us that we could come and see everything. So this is something extension of an enterprise zone, which is currently, where does it start at Kim right now? Down south, the arsenal, and they want to bring it all the way up to Bolingbrook where this property is. And I guess there's another property in Plainfield that they'd like to include into that. So that'll be coming forward. I just wanted to let everybody get a heads up on that because I had heard bits and pieces, but nothing is as uh, concrete as what I heard yesterday. So if you want to see this, I'll leave this um, with Kim and you could rent it out of the library, I suppose. You know, and that's all I have to say. We don't have a need for executive session today. Um, if I could get an, a motion to approve the county board agenda as amended. Motion Mueller, second Berkowitz, previous Freeman, second Williams. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I get a motion to adjourn. Motion Mueller, all in favor? Aye. Oh, just adjourn. Next meeting is Wednesday, July 3rd. If you guys haven't seen the, the special on WCCW,